A liquidity crisis is imminent as the underlying structures of the market are about to break. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And in an unprecedented amount of withdrawal of fiscal and monetary stimulus, liquidity from the markets is gone, and that means things are about to crash. Let's head over to Twitter where we pick up this image showing the liquidity index. And what I want you to see here in white is the equity market liquidity index just goes crashing down right at the end of 2017. And what happens overlaying the equity market, the S&P 500? Well, it comes down to look again, liquidity starts to come down mid to late 2018. And look what happens. The equity markets come crashing down. And then you see, of course, we all know the March 2020 event fresh in our minds now look what happened liquidity dried up and stocks went down and now look liquidity is as the worst position it's been in the last several years and we're at a point where people believe we're going still going to see a melt up in stocks but right now based on the underlying liquidity and again this is happening due to the withdrawal of fiscal monetary stimulus it looks like the equity markets are about to crash. Now let's dig deeper into this, and I want you to see how this plays out. Now we're gonna look at the original post from this from Fading Rallies on Twitter. He says, equity market liquidity has absolutely collapsed. Markets entered a new volatility regime following Volmageddon. Evaporating liquidity reflects this. Volatility is expanding, and this is just systematics pulling. Bids are vanishing, and real de deleveraging will trigger feedback loops. And what does that mean by bids are vanishing well again the equity market is just a large auction and buyers disappear because there's no liquidity meaning they have no money well what happens to prices they go down and that triggers a feedback loop and what is he talking about well let's dig a little deeper and re review what happens to the VIX or volatility index. Now, when volatility rises, it's normally associated with falling stock prices. It doesn't always have to mean that. It just means there's a massive dislocation in price. So all volatility is telling you is that prices are very far apart. When markets are very liquid, trades happen very close to each other. So when it's illiquid like now, well, you see big moves and you can see them both up or down. But look at these events here. And again, we go back to that 2017, 2018, 2020, and now suggesting the volatility as I've been talking about is at risk of going up. Well, what does that mean to stock prices? Well, we can see here on the S&P 500, it means stock prices go lower in each time, likely suggesting a big unwind. But what about the bond market? because the prevailing view of the bond market is that interest rates can only go up. They can only ever now go up. We're in a secular bull market in yield. Inflation is here to stay perpetually. But remember, I've talked about how the structures of the market, how all these volatility-linked products go from holding equities to bonds when volatility breaks out. Well, let me show you what happens. Let's go and look at these data points. Here we can see in 2017, yields went down a little bit. Again, there wasn't a big blowout in the VIX. Here you can see 2018, yields would come crumbling down. And you see March of 2020, yields went down again. And now everyone's primed to see yields go higher. And reality is yields are likely to go much, much lower. Now, if you're concerned at all of what this could mean to your portfolio, well, don't be. Be sure to check out Portfolio Shield. There's a link in the corner and the description below. It was designed to handle events like this. You'll be glad you did. All right, let's keep going because the Treasury market liquidity is eroding with Fed's course at gamble, according to Bloomberg. The gauge of dislocations, again, this is just price movements, is approaching last year's highs. Market depth is worse and short dated than intermediate tenors. And liquidity is eroding the U.S. Treasury market again as the past week's controversy about how much and how quickly the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates this year has unleashed a bout of extreme volatility and yields. Mine to the upside. The Bloomberg U.S. Government Securities Liquidity Index, a gauge of deviations in yields from fair value model, is approaching last year's high, reached early November. And at that time, expectations for Fed hikes had begun to mount in October, causing historically large daily swings in short day treasury yields in particular. And for good reason. There's a massive shortage in collateral. If any of you are fans of my friend Jeff Snyder, who's talked about this for many years about how there's a huge collateral shortage, well, there's 1.6 
seven trillion dollars in a shortage in the market of treasury bills now so it makes sense that we see this dislocation in the front of the curve because there is a huge huge shortage but that dislocation isn't that bad on the rest of the curve let's take a look as with short positions anticipating higher yields elevated and continue to grow liquidity will be essential to avert a dramatic repricing haha keywords lower in yield as i've suggested in the event of a reversal in sentiment that drives investors out of those positions. And again, the prevailing view is rates have to go higher. Everybody is betting on that. They've taken huge short positions. I'm going to show you that in a moment. And what is this telling us? As Bloomberg has pointed out, as I've been suggesting, as I just showed you in the chart, this means yields go lower. Let's continue on because we'll head over to the New York Fed who tracks dealer inventories. And here you can see, look at this, three-year treasury note has minus $8.3 billion in inventory. The dealers are, are, are not just short inventory, they're, they don't have enough inventory because there's so many people short three years. Now notice you get here, into the fives and there's you know 14 billion 14 and a half billion you get out here to sevens there's a little over 10 billion in inventory how about you go out to tens and this is after the recent auction dealers are still short five billion because so many people are short 10-year treasuries betting on higher yields and there's a reasonable amount of liquidity or depth in 20s at 13 and a half billion and 30s at 30.6 billion so when they refer to liquidity they're referring to availability in this case and you can see in threes and tens well, everybody's so short them that dealers just don't have enough inventory. The treasury's not issuing enough debt to get the dealers back to even, if you can believe that. Let's keep going because we look at the futures positions. We head over to Hedgeopia here. We see the market is short, validating what we're seeing in the data. How about 30 years? They're short. And what did the article just say? That this would cause a repricing and send yields higher and that would then lead to a destruction of all of this debt that's sitting under the equity market you look at this margin debt and we can see here going back to 2018 you see in red this is margin debt margin debt collapsed and brought stocks down with it and if you're not familiar with margin debt it's people borrowing against their stocks to buy more stocks and now you i want to see just how bad this position is look what happened in march 2020 you see margin debt collapse, equity prices collapse, and now we're sitting not near record high on margin debt. We're still here at the current level on this black line. We're still very, very high uh, compared to historical norms. Imagine there is a volatility explosion. What happens to all this debt? It gets repriced and sends stock prices down even lower. And then when this plays out, this liquidity event, it's going to put to test many investment strategies, many portfolio models, many trading strategies. Everyone's going to find out just who the real deal is and who comes through this. It's also for those of you who are sitting on the sideline with some cash. Well, you've been looking for an opportunity. One's about to come knocking. Hope you're ready to pull the trigger when that comes. I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Bye now. The content of this video is provided as education or information only. It's not intended to provide investment or advice. It should also be construed as recognition or solicitation by our security securities, financial instrument, or participate in any particular training strategy. This video was prepared by Steve Van Meter. Personal capacity, business expressions, video that I do not affect the value of Inc. or Steve Van Meter Financial.